And we're gonna use the narrative device of building a brain tonight. What are the challenges of doing what we're talking about tonight? If you're gonna build a brain, you actually have to know how it's put together in the first place. This volume is the size of a single red blood cell. All of that volume of brain took us years to reconstruct manually. If we were going to map the entire human brain at that level, we'd have to repeat what I just showed you eight trillion times. That's the perspective from someone focused on neurons. So what was your reaction when you heard about the idea to map? Only 15% of the cells in the brain are neurons. The map is leaving out half the brain. The majority of cells don't make electrical impulses, so they've been kind of ignored. These are called glia. There has to be a lot of other communication going on in the brain. There are no wires, there are no hard drives, there's no digital code. The brain's not a computer. If we could do what people want to do, what kind of technology do we need? It probably is right to say that the brain is not really like a computer, but nevertheless we can build computers that are like brains. What we need to do is not just build a computer model of the brain, but we need to embody that computer model. Brains evolved in order to make bodies move around in the world in order to improve its chances of survival and, uh, and reproduction. And that's really fundamentally what brains are for. How far are we just from creating a robot that can walk like a human? If we've learned anything from AI, you can't throw more computation at these problems. What we need is to find constraints on a problem. A robot has to do something. It needs to interact with an environment, have goals, desires. It may need other robots similarly composed. One of the main cognitive capacities that we have is imitation. Yeah, and it has to be really, really big. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be that Cause, big. Because otherwise it can't climb up the Empire State Building. <laughs>